Antlers, Oklahoma. We're here at Antlers Motorsports, and I just bought me a new quad. They're programming a second key right now for it. So the Can-Ams only come with one key now, one performance key. Just went ahead and bought a second performance key, 50 bucks, not a big deal. Went ahead and bought a full synthetic oil change kit for it as well. Gotta get that break-in oil out of it, but uh, we're fixing to load it up. Here it is, the new 2024 Can-Am Outlander 850. It's the XT model, and it is exactly what I wanted. I'll go over some of the features of the machine, what's a little bit different about this year model, and I'm gonna tell you right now why I chose a Can-Am Outlander and decided to upgrade over old trusty, my brute force. So let's just get into that right now. Why did I choose to upgrade, I'll call it. First of all, it was nothing, it has nothing to do with power, okay? Kawasaki will run with that 850 all day long, no problem. Um, it's more about comfort for me. So the Kawasaki, let's just turn this around and look at that real quick. The Kawasaki is so light in the back end that a lot of the trail riding that we do, it just kind of throws you around a little bit. And the Japanese manufacturers refuse to come out with a new V-twin big bore. And I love a V-twin. I'm not a single cylinder guy. As far as reliability goes, this thing has been fantastic, but so have the Can-Ams. Why did I not go with a Can-Am initially? This is a 2020 year model, by the way. I've put 2,000 miles on it. Um, and you guys have seen the videos that we do. We do trail riding, so a lot of rocky terrain. Why did I not go with a Can-Am in the first place? I did not know anything about them. All I've ever known was Kawasaki. Kawasaki's been great to us. Kawasaki has been reliable for us. Ridiculous amount of power out of that engine that they refuse to update. So. Basically, I just got tired of being tossed around the trails. You know, some days we'll ride, I don't know, 100 miles close to it. And after a long day of that, it, it really wears on you. It can really beat you up. So that was the main reason. But another reason was I wanted a little bit more width, a little bit more stance. There are pros and cons to both machines. The pro to the Kawasaki is because it's so slim. It's not as wide across the machine, but that's also a con too. Let me show you what I mean. So the Kawasaki is quite slim. It's probably, I'm gonna say two inches maybe, slimmer than the Outlanders, but it's also tipsy. So I have to be very careful. I have to know which line to take. Sometimes it works in my favor, sometimes it doesn't. I would rather feel safer, and I think the Can-Am will make me feel safer on the trails that we ride. Once again, this is, this is uh, Ozark Mountain ATV trail riding. That's where we ride. We ride rocky terrain, steep slopes, a um, little bit of mud, a little bit of water, a little bit of creek crossing, river crossing, things of that nature. So that wider stance should tremendously help me, and that's why I've upgraded from the Kawasaki. This thing is for sale going Can-Am from now on. If Kawasaki would have upgraded their machine and came out with something similar to this, no question I would have went with the Cowie or a Yamaha, a Suzuki. I'm not biased. Any of those three have CVT transmissions. I'm not a Honda guy. I like a CVT. I like, I like, I like to feel like uh, there's a rocket ship, like I'm riding a rocket ship. And that's pretty much what a CVT does for you. The, the brute force is no slouch, by the way. But we're here to talk about the Outlander. So let's talk about the Outlander. What's new on this model? Well, the 23 model, starting in the 23 model, updated headlights. So now they come with LED headlights. Kind of ridiculous that it took manufacturers this long to get on the LED train. Um, I know Matt's bike is a XT1000 and it came with halogen bulbs. Josh's is a 2020 uh, XT850. It came with halogen bulbs. They had to upgrade their bulbs to LEDs. This Kawasaki is a 2020. You can see I upgraded the bulbs in there to LEDs, but I don't have to do that. 
with the new Can-Am. So that's, that's a huge upgrade. Um, and they are crazy bright, really, really bright. In fact, let me lower the door down and turn the lights off and we'll see if we can get a little uh, test going here. Okay, now I've got windows in my garage, so it's not crazy dark, but this might be enough to show you how bright they are. First of all, the Kawasaki, just for comparison purposes, and these are LED bulbs, but they don't project like I wanted them to. So I did have an LED light bar on there. I took it off because I'm selling the machine, but not bad, just not great. So now let's check out the, okay, so I'm new to the Can-Ams, but there you go. You can see it's, it's more like, um, more like a vehicle, more like a, a car. So low beams, high beams, really nice bright, bright headlights. I really wonder if I'm even going to put an LED bar on this thing. I've got an LED bar I can put on it, but man, they're so bright. I just don't think I need to. Um, obviously I haven't driven at night with it yet. This thing's brand new. I've only driven it once by the way. So, so yeah, as I was saying, I've only driven this once down that driveway and back about a thousand feet, something like that. So I, I've literally not driven it uh, about a thousand feet up and down the driveway. What else is new? Okay, so this is the biggest feature. This is another reason I wanted the machine other than safety and comfort. This was huge for me. This started in the 2023 year model. So if, if you've got a 23 XT or up, they'll have this feature. Now we're all familiar, if you're familiar with Can-Ams, we're all familiar with the intelligent throttle control. So we can, let me just get on the machine so we can run through this real quick. Do it justice. So if I press this button, sport mode, sport mode off, that's what we call normal mode, me, Matt, and Josh. And then we've got work mode. So I'm just toggling here. So I'll go to normal mode and then sport mode. I love that it gives you an audible when you go into sport mode. That is new in and of itself. Also, you've got the dynamic power steering, so you've got selectable power steering. So to change this, the power steering, I can press this rev uh, button. It's not doing nothing. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm new to, uh, to Can-Ams. All right, here we go. Now I can press this button and we've got DPS Max turned on. I'm gonna hold it, minimum, medium, maximum. So all I'm doing is holding that button and it's changing the smoothness or the assistance of the motor that drives the power steering. So that's kind of nice. Um, what else is new that's huge about this? This is what I've been holding out on you for, uh, the intelligent engine braking and it is selectable and it is incredible. Um, so far, the one time I've drove it up, up and down the driveway. <laughs> so let's get that straight. Okay, so intelligent engine braking mode. If I, you've got this button back here. Let me zoom in on that. So you've got this little button. It's right here, very conveniently placed. So if I press that button, let's see, do I have to turn it back on again? Nope. All I have to do is hold that button. So there's intelligent engine braking minimum. I'm holding it again, max and medium. So I will probably run this on max, especially when I'm <laughs> in the Ozarks, but that is a huge deal um, for the train that we ride. We love that. I know the Kawasaki has phenomenal engine braking built into it, but it's gonna be really nice to be able to lessen the engine braking or increase the engine braking a little bit. Um, that should be pretty fun. So that's a huge deal to me. What else is new on this year's model? I was told that the A-arms are designed a little bit differently. They've got an arched A-arm. I don't know because once again, I don't have the other Can-Ams here with me to compare it to, but uh, something about the A-arms I was told is different. They're saying that they have a new arched a arm. So I don't know. Don't know anything about that. I just know the LED headlights, the intelligent engine braking, those are huge deals for me. Um, 
I think I'm really going to enjoy it. Overall, I'm very satisfied. I've um, got it at Antlers Motorsports in Antlers, Oklahoma. And they gave me a great deal on it. Modifications will be coming soon. Just a few, not many. I like my machines relatively stock. The tires that come with the Outlanders are phenomenal for trail riding, for doing what we do, the, the Terracross RTs. Um, they've been coming with the Can-Ams for a really long time and they are great. So, anyways, if you guys like the video, please give me a like, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode.